Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and call this regular meeting May 19th, 2020 to order. Uh, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call, please. Mrs. Yancey. Here. Mrs. McCarthy. Here. Mrs. Saxon. Here. Mrs. Tamira. Here. And Mr. Vaca. Here. Finalization of the agenda. Is there anything to add and or delete? The agenda is final and is presented. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the written summary of the regular minutes for the meeting on April 21st, 2020. Moved. Second. Second. Moved by Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Yetzi. Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. Mr. Baca. Yes. Motion carries, 5-0. Okay, we will move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight, it is my pleasure to recognize this year's retirees from the North Ridgeville City Schools. Combined, the small group of retirees has rendered 101 years of service to our district. We are so proud of the commitment and dedication this group of professionals has put into nurturing the children of our community. We thank them tonight for their service. We recognize them for the mentorship and leadership they have shared with their colleagues over the years. The 2019-2020 school year is ending in a way that none of us could ever expect it, could have ever expected. Tonight, this pandemic prevents us from being together for the in-person public recognition this distinguished group of retirees deserves. This is not how any of us would have wanted it to end, but we will celebrate them nonetheless. Now I would like to present and recognize the retirees of the North Ridgeville City Schools. We begin with Jane Frick. Jane is retiring after 17 years of service to the North Ridgeville City Schools. Ms. Frick was hired as a leave replacement reading teacher at the middle school on July 15, 2003 and joined NRCS full-time in December of 2004. She was a language arts teacher until her retirement on July 1, 2020. During Ms. Frick's career with NRCS, she was the middle school academic challenge advisor, a math intervention summer school teacher, and a third grade reading intervention tutor. Thank you so much, Mrs. Frick, for your service. Frick, would you like to say anything? In one moment when we unmute. <laughs> now you're yes, it's, been a, it's been a real pleasure and I've enjoyed all 17 years working with both administration and the students and I am sorry it is very bittersweet to see it come to an end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Our next retiree is Shannon Ives. Shannon is a fourth grade teacher at NRAC and is retiring after 33 years of service to the district. Ms. Ives was initially hired as a leave replacement during the 87-88 school year and covered elementary classes at both Field Suite and Liberty Elementary. Ms. Ives was hired as a full-time second grade teacher at Liberty until she moved to third grade in 2002-2003. Shannon moved to fourth grade in 1314, where she re remained until her pending retirement on October 1st of 2020. During her career with NRCS, Ms. Ives has been an outdoor education assistant, third grade department head, a mentor to new teachers, spelling bee coordinator at Liberty, a member of the building leadership team for Liberty, an hourly home instructor, and a third grade guarantee after school tutor. Thank you so much, Ms. Ives. Ms. Ives, would you like to say anything? 
Well, first of all, I do today. I didn't even remember all of that. <laughs> Good for you. Um, it's been a pleasure. I have worked my entire career in Norfolk, and it is bittersweet. And it's kind of a sad um, ending with no closure. But I do look forward to coming back and substituting to kind of give me that, um, I don't know, that e to ease my way out, I guess. Uh, I do look forward to bigger and better ahead, though, too. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Our next retiree is Terry Maurer. Terry was hired as a small group tutor in October of 1999 and is an intervention specialist in a resource room working with multi-handicapped students in June of 2001. She remained in that position until her pending retirement on September 1st, 2020. During her 21 years of service with NRCS, Ms. Maurer was an hourly home instructor, a member of the Strategic Plan for Continuous Improvement team at Wilcox, a member of both the Wilcox and the NRAC 5-8 building leadership teams and the district leadership team. Please join me in congratulating Terry Maurer. Ms. Maurer, would you like to say anything? Just to say thank you for this honor and recognition. I definitely will uh, miss everyone and It'll be a big adjustment after 20 some years of dedicating myself to North Ridgeville, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And our final retiree this evening is Cindy Naprestic. Cindy was hired as a substitute teacher in November of 1988. She was then hired as a leave replacement elementary art teacher in August of 1991. In 1992, she was hired as a part-time art teacher. In June of 94, Ms. Naprestic was hired as a full art-time teacher at the middle school until she moved to elementary art at Wilcox in 2005, where she remained until moving to Liberty in the 17-18 school year. Ms. Naprestic also taught a semester of art at North Ridgeville High School. During her 30-year career with NRCS, Ms. Naprestic was an art club advisor and was a member of the art course of study team. Cindy retired on February 1st, 2020. Please join me in thanking Ms. Naprestic for her service. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody and all the support that you guys have given me and all the teachers and principals. Um, I feel like I've gone K through 12 in a matter of uh, a year, um, but I really, really enjoyed every every group that I've had. And um, uh, seeing I retired a little bit, I have a little taste of it. Feels really, really good to wake up when you want to and take a nap whenever. <laughs> so I just would like to thank you. I'm going to pursue some of my own art and um, maybe get in, keep my fingers in the pot, kind of maybe. I'm a, I'm a member of Arts Council, so I'm sure I'll keep busy. Thank you. Thank you. Just a congratulatory note for the entire retiring class of 2020. Uh, we are so thankful for your service. Um, but before we finish, I would be remiss if I did also not acknowledge the North Ridgeville High School graduating class of 2020. For the past two days, I've had the honor of conferring diplomas to our graduates by recording a virtual commencement ceremony. Just as our retirees tonight have missed out on a culminating experience, so too have our graduating seniors. I am so proud of our retirees and the class of 2020 and all that they have accomplished. I am confident that our students are prepared for future success. Thank you to all the staff of North Ridgeville City Schools who supported these students throughout the years, including our four retirees tonight. Thank you also to the parents, grandparents, friends, and families of our graduates for their support. And I also want to recognize the hard work of Tom Zendry and Petey Bianca and the entire NRHS administrative team and staff 
for organizing this virtual graduation under extraordinary circumstances. I cannot wait to see the final commencement video, which will be shown to our graduates at the Autorama on June 8th. Thank you again to our retirees and to our class of 2020. Um, on behalf of the Board of Education and my administrative team, we are all so proud of you and thank you for your service. We'll go ahead and move on to the five-year forecast update. So for those of you waiting, we are pulling up our five-year forecast PowerPoint uh, that our treasurer, Mr. East, will share um, and give us a picture of the outlook of our financial um, picture for the district for the next five years. This is required um, every November now for every board uh, to approve a five-year forecast and to have that also uploaded to the Ohio Department of Education. Um, and we are also required every May to update that. As you know, um, finances change and it's really um, crucial that school districts stay on top of our finances and make sure that we are in good position moving forward. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Superintendent. I think Paul's trying, trying to arrange it so that the people at home can see the PowerPoint presentation also. Well, I'll start with, by saying, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished board members and retirees and community members. It's a pleasure to be here. A few technical difficulties. He's almost there. He's a good man. So if you want, there we go. Showing us across this There we go. Good. Thank you, Paul. Let's see if this works now. All right. The superintendent covered a few of these items. It is a requirement of the Ohio Revised Code, and it has to be submitted to the Department of Education semi-annually, both in November and May. It's for the general fund only, or the operational fund of the district. It has three years prior revenue at the current year and four future consecutive years. The same goes for expenditures three prior years, the current year, and four consecutive years in advance. And it also has the assumptions used in predicting these revenue and expenditures, and they are the basis for the report. The purpose of the report is really a roadmap to the district's financial future. We have to plan for consistency, we have to plan for change, and it shows the district's anticipated revenue and projected expenditures. I like to use it as just like when I was a kid, my folks used to get a trip tick. Of course, now we have GPSs and we don't need triptychs anymore. But anyway, district's financial future and the road to success. Are there obstacles on our journey? Yes, there are. There's uncertainty. There's changes in the income stream or our revenue. There's changes in legislation, which can be at the state level, the federal level, and of course the local level with the auditor. And increasing enrollment, those all pre present obstacles on our journey. The state of Ohio revenue for fiscal year 20, I'm not going to read each pie chart, but the state's revenue is approximately $34 billion. The major sources of the revenue are individual income taxes, sales taxes, and of course federal grants. And that's the reason for our recent cuts because both the top two have been depleted because of 
people being out of work and of course the lack of stores being opened and the retail sales being down. The appropriations for the state of Ohio and their totals again is $33 billion and the major sources for their budget areas are 25% for primary and secondary education or K-12. Higher ed gets about 8% and other education gets about one and a half. And then the biggest portion of the state budget is Medicaid. The state reductions that just occurred and you've read about them in the paper, I don't need to reiterate them, but take K-12 received 25% cut in the budget, which is a total of 39% of the total cuts. So K-12 took a big chunk, almost 40% of the total cuts, and they had to absorb it. For the, our district, North Ridgeville City Schools, FY19 pie chart, of course those are Browns colors, for those people looking forward to football. But the major sources of revenue include real estate taxes, about 54%, State aid or the foundation is about 28%, which totals over 82% of our revenue source. The other includes interest, local income, and other sources for the general fund. The annual general fund expenditures, again, my favorite brown colors, unlike Patriot colors. Uh, major expenditures are salaries and wages of 53.4%, fringe benefits of 17.4%, and purchase services about 16 and a half. That totals about 87% of our total general fund budget. The others are supplies and materials, equipment, and other objects and transfers and advances. The other objects include state auditor fees, treasury and auditor fees, and memberships into like the OSBA. State funding. There's a misnomer that the state gives us $6,020 per student. That is basic aid. However, there's the thing called the state share index, which is a mathematical computation of 16 iterations and they range from 90% to 5%. The poorest districts getting 90% of the $6,000 and the richest districts only getting 5%. So school districts like Beachwood only receive about $300 per student per year. North Ridgeville City Schools state share index is about 35%. So in other words, we receive 35% of the basic aid funding or in other words, $2,124. However, we spend about $9,700 per year on every student. There's also another thing the state does to us. We have what's called calculated aid. It takes the number of students times the $6,020 times our state share index, and it comes up with $9,215. However, they also cap our district at 5%. So in essence, this year, we only received almost $8.8 .8 million of the 9.2 that was due to us. In other words, it's called the whammy. And we have now the third whammy. They decreased, they decreased our basic aid funding by $969,000, almost a million dollars. So we have the triple whammy. You have the state share index, you have the capped, and you have the decrease in basic aid. So I guess it's like having the trifecta in negative terms. The total decrease in our basic aid was about 8.21% for this current fiscal year. Cuts in revenue from the state, again, 969,000 for this fiscal year. And next fiscal year, it's anticipated about 1.9 million or 16% cuts in revenue. Again, these are estimated but from our information we have provided from the Department of Education, it will be almost double that of fiscal year 20. We anticipate returning to fiscal year 19 levels in 21 and or in 22, thank you. What are the potential issues for real estate tax revenue? First of all, there's the delinquency of real estate tax payments. In some counties, they're predicting 15%. However, in Lorain County, it can be five to 10%, and that is due to people and citizens unable to pay their real estate taxes because of being laid off or other financial crisis. Another thing with the COVID is the lack of con new construction. We anticipate it being stalled. In other words, it'll still be new construction, but it won't be as aggressive and robust as it has been in the past. We also anticipate a sluggish real estate market. In other words, people not wanting to upgrade their homes because of the current financial condition. 
in 2021, there's an item called the Trino update. That's when the auditor reevaluates the properties and moves them up a certain percentage based on what he considers market growth. And then in 2024, it'll be reappraisal where they actually come out and do through a Google map search, you're looking at your home and trying to reappraise it. These are potential issues with real estate tax revenue. What about delinquencies? It's really a cash flow is issue and eventually we'll collect 100% of the money. It just may be delayed. The new construction, we anticipate decrease about 67% for a two year period, both FY21 and FY22. And then we hope to have a resurgence in real estate tax growth in 23 and have, have it go back to FY20 levels. It was $25 million in assessed valuation of new construction in FY19. The try new update in 2021, we anticipate zero growth in the assessed valuation and the auditor's update. In 2008, we saw a serious decrease in the assessed valuation. So that is very possible in 2021. And of course, with the reappraisal in 2024, we could see a rebound in the real estate economy and maybe it won't be as bad as we anticipate if it does not stall out for another two years. FY20, the current fiscal year, our revenue was about $50.8 million. Our expenditure is 52.4 and our reserves are 22.8 million. The 22.8 are savings we've had and by the progressive and good management by the superintendent and the Board of Education to acquire those reserves. In 2021, our revenue will be 44.7 million and our expenditures about 48.8 million, leaving our reserves about 18.7 million. You can see that the, rev the reserves are declining from fiscal year to fiscal year. Fiscal year 22, revenue of 46.7 million, the expenditures rising to 50.4 million, and the reserves decreasing to 15 million. 23, same scenario. Revenue about 47 million, expenditures 52 million. The reserves are down about 9.8 million, a little under 10. 2024, last year of the forecast, the revenue was anticipated at 47.6 million, the expenditures at 53.9, and the reserves are down to 3.6 million. And 2025, the reserves have been depleted. So something has to be done between now and fiscal year 24, either the, the growth in the real estate market, the growth in foundation, or expenditures need to be curtailed a little bit. Again, these expenditures were determined and projected based on current spending. Thank you, Mr. President, Madam Superintendent. Thank you very that much. my report. Thank you very much. Uh, an abundance of information, but you really explained it in a way where it makes sense. I really appreciate you explaining what a ticker ticket was in regards to GPS, because up until you explained that, I don't think anybody else knew. Oh, I knew. I, I knew. Oh, I'm the only one that didn't know. Shame. Yeah. You had to flip it over when you got to the end of the page. Yeah. Yeah. Highlighted. Highlighted. And highlight. Mm-hmm. Got it. Well, I guess I was the only one in the room that did not know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll move on to announcements this evening. Is there any announcements? Seeing none, we will move on to. Okay. Here's an opportunity for hearing of the public on agenda items. If there's anybody in attendance this evening that would like to address something that's on the agenda, Now's your opportunity. One second here. Okay. And now they can unmute themselves to do that. Yes. This is uh, Does she have a question? Go ahead. I just. Sorry, I've never attended a board meeting this way. Um, I wanted to know um, what the plans were for um, reopening regarding um, the standards and um, the practices. Have you guys discussed any of that yet? 
um, at this point, this is agenda items only. So if you don't mind, I'm going to defer you to later on in the uh, agenda where it's items that you would like to discuss. But right now, we're only discussing things that are currently on tonight's agenda. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and move on. It is recommended the Board of Education approve the consent agenda resolution as presented. Moved. Second. Uh, moved by Ms. Tamira, second by Ms. Yetzi. Sorry, Marcy, I'm catching up. Oh no, I, I cannot hear Mrs. Yetzi. Like, I'm really having a difficult time hearing her. Somewhere I can go. You could. You can actually go in the room next door. Okay. Okay, Marcy, what we're going to do is uh, Miss Yetsi's going to go ahead and she's going to go in the room next door so she can unmute her laptop. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But I can hear you guys perfectly. Once she's relocated, we know she's rejoined us. At that point, we'll go ahead and take roll call. Kristen, can you hear us? Ms. Yetzi, can you hear us okay? Yes, okay. yes, I can. All right, is there any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. She can't answer. She's muted by the host and needs to be unmuted. I guess a thumbs up means yes. <laughs> okay. That one muted? So muted. Yeah, she's muted. We're getting there, Miss McCarthy. There we go. Yes. Outstanding. Right. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. And Mr. Baca. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. We'll move on to the finance audit report. Ms. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have two items for your consideration under the finance and audit report this evening. Uh, first, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the financial report and report of interest and investments for the April 2020, um, for April 2020 as uh, presented. I move to approve this finance and audit report in one reading. Second. Moved by Ms. McCarthy, second by Ms. Jackson. Is, is there any discussion this evening? Roll call, please. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. And Mr. Vaca. Yes. Well, she carries 5-0. Our second item for consideration this evening is the approval of the five-year forecast, which we just heard presented um, very eloquently by Mr. East. Thank you for that, sir. Um, the state of Ohio, just as a reminder, requires the districts to file a five-year forecast, a financial forecast each November, and then update that forecast in May. Um, the forecast reflects three years of historical data and estimated amounts for the current plus four years. I move that we approve the five-year forecast in one reading. Second. Moved by Ms. McCarthy, second by Ms. Tamira. Is there any discussion? Can we please make a Ms. note? Uh, oh. Go ahead, Ms. Saxon. I just wanted to thank Mr. East uh, for that presentation. It really uh, made it much easier for me to understand and, and the report that you sent to the board. Thank you for the time that you put into that along with your staff. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Okay, roll call. Mr. Vaca, I don't know if this was what you were gonna make a note of, but the report would be on file in the treasurer's office. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, roll call. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. 
Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. Mr. Baca. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Baca, we will also put that five year forecast on the website also for people to view. Outstanding. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to buildings and operations report. It is recommended that the Board of Education grant the Ohio Department of Transportation a temporary easement for completion of a construction project on Center Ridge Road. The easement is for approximately 150 square feet to enable ODOT to park equipment on district property. I move to approve the resolution to provide the necessary right of way easement in one reading. Second. Who was the second on that? Mrs. It was me, Mrs. McCarthy. Thank you. Moved by myself, second by Mr. McCarthy. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Baca. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. And Mrs. Kamira. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. We'll move on to the Human Resources Report. Ms. Saxon. We have a few items to consider under the Human Resource Report. Four certified staff appointments, one special project stipend, two support staff appointments, four summer school certified staff appointments, one request for auxiliary services, one certified staff adjustment, one support staff resignation, I move to approve the human resources items in one reading. Second. By Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Yetzi. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. Mrs. Yetzi. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. And Mr. Vodka. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Here's an opportunity for um, hearing of the public on new items. And that was the opportunity to address the board with any concerns you may have. So members can now unmute themselves. I think this is when Jameson wanted to ask a question. Yes. I wanted to know if there's going to be um, an online only option for students in the fall until there's a vaccine. Right, what are the plans for the district's plans? Thank you very much for that question. Um, as you know, um, or, or perhaps you don't know, if not, uh, we did launch a survey on Monday to our parents, um, as well as our teaching staff and support staff um, to get some feedback on what options uh, parents and families, students, staff would be comfortable with. That, that is one piece of the puzzle. The second piece is what will be determined by our governor um, and uh, director of health in terms of what will be allowable in the fall. Uh, we do know that right now there are a, a range of thoughts um, and we are so appreciative for the community for all of the input um, I believe the last I checked, and I believe Mr. Pritt is here, can confirm this. We had roughly 1,200 responses um, in a very short time to the survey launched yesterday. So we are getting some great feedback. Um, and so at this point, we don't have um, an exact plan in place, um, but we will use this feedback along with um, our health department, our governor, um, and those guidelines that are set forth and come up with some options for North Ridgeville City Schools. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other than dickheads. She said we put out a survey. Huh? They said they put out a survey. I said that. I'd like to thank everybody and I'd like to recognize Paul through all of this. Um, all of this is technology driven um, and he's done a great job of getting us in and out of mute, unmute. Um, 
quite frankly, keeping an eye on the public because unfortunately there are entities in the public that would like to take this opportunity to embarrass school districts. And Paul's done an amazing job of taking care of that and protecting us through that. Um, it's very fluid in these meetings and he's doing a great job of responding. Uh, I wanna thank all the community members that are participating via Zoom. Uh, that's appreciated as well. Uh, I'd like to also take one last opportunity to congratulate the class of 2020. Unfortunately, you'll forever be remembered as the class that missed out on some rites of passage your senior year. But the staff has been amazing. The community's been amazing. We've, they've absolutely rallied around the class of 2020. And I'm forever grateful for all those people that did that, whether it be the adopt a senior that's been going on to the staff, the virtual commencement. Uh, we really have rallied around you young men and women trying to make this a special occasion as what you've deserved. So I wanna thank all those that made that possible. And to our retirees, thank you. Thank you for years of service. <laughs> thank you for what everybody's done through this process. Right here at the end of your career, having to deal with online schooling and all the things that you probably never thought you'd have to deal with and you had to deal with it. So thank you very much. Hopefully that did, wasn't one of the reasons that you rushed out the door on us to retirement, but if it did, I don't blame you. So again, congratulations on your retirement and thank you very much. All right, it is recommended that the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss the employment of a public official. Moved. Second. By Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Tamira. Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Jamira? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. And Mr. Vodka? Yes. 